Hello everyone, in this video I'm going over Azure Service Health. Hello all, I'm back from Microsoft Ignite with a bunch of information I want to share. In this video I'm going over Azure Service Health and Azure Status. Before I get started though, I want to take a minute to ask everyone to subscribe. It's simple, just click the big red subscribe button that's at the bottom of the screen someplace. Don't hesitate to like and even comment if you're feeling crazy. You can also follow me on Twitter where I post earth-shattering social commentary such as my true feelings about the whole grain croissant served at Microsoft Ignite this year. Let's get started with Azure Service Health. This service allows you to monitor and report on issues with Microsoft Azure. This should really be one of the first steps you take in setting up a new Azure subscription. In the rest of this video, I'm going to walk through the interface and show you how to set up an email and a text alert. Let's get started. Okay, let's get started with Azure Service Health. And actually, before we do that, let's go over and take a look at Azure Status. Azure Status is a web page that shows you the status of all Microsoft um, regions and services. As you can see here, we've got a lot of green check marks, which is good. The nice thing about this compared to the, what we're going to look at with uh, Service Health is this is available for users who don't have an Azure subscription. So with that, let's go over to Service Health. And you can find that by going to All Services and typing in Service Health. Once you find it, I like to click the star so it'll show up over, under Favorites going forward. So you can see it's broken up into four different categories, active events, history, resource health, and alerts. We're gonna start with active events and look at service issues. So this is a dashboard you can create or a, a filter you can create to look at different regions and services and subscriptions to identify any potential issue. So here you can see I've got my two subscriptions. I've got uh, all regions selected, but I could easily uncheck that and just go to the regions that I actually have services in. And then services, you can select all if you want, or you can select uh, individual ones that you may be interested in viewing. You can see it has an interactive little green dot here now to show the regions that I have and to show that they are available. I can save this filter. I can also pin this filter to my dashboard. Now if I go over to my dashboard, I have to scroll over and I can edit the dashboard and drag that over to where I can see it. And now I can get a quick status of service health every time I log in. And I simply click on that to go back. And the next item under active events is planned maintenance. This would show you plan maintenance. If there's any maintenance going on that affects any of the uh, subscriptions, regions, or services selected up here, it will show you. Fortunately, I don't have any plan maintenance showing up in here, although it doesn't make for the best demo. But I'll show you under health history what that would look like. Health advisories will show you any current issues going on uh, with the subscription region or service selected. And here again, I have nothing to show, which I guess is good. Let's go into history. Health history is going to show you a historical view of service outages. If I come in here and select, uh, let's select South Central. I'm going to add that to the list and change the filter to, we'll go back the last three months. And here you can see the great South Central service outage of 2018. So, under the service outage, we're going to have a couple things here. Uh, we've got the uh, link that you can copy and send off to coworkers or friends if you want them to see the service outage. You can download the issue summary. Uh, you can track it with a mobile phone, and you can also tweet about it. 
This is very similar to what you would see if there was plan maintenance or a health advisory. In that case, if there was plan maintenance or a health advisory, you could also go into issue update to see an update of the issues. Okay, with that, let's go to resource health. Azure Service Health gives you information about problems that affect a wide range of Azure services. Azure Services Resource Health gives you information that's specific to your resources. So in this case, I'm going to change this to uh, Visual Studio Enterprise. And here you can see it's listing virtual machines that I have specifically under that subscription. Now I can go into one, one of these and look at different health history issues that came up. This is useful if you want to see history or SLA on a particular service. One thing to note though is you have to select a specific subscription and resource type. You can't select uh, multiple subscriptions or resource types. So it's difficult to report on multiple services that may be having an issue. Here you can see I've got a couple different statuses. Um, this green is available. There's also an unavailable. These VMs are powered off, so there is no uh, information available. There's also a non-platform event that's triggered by a user's action. So, for example, if I actually shut one off, may show here. Nope. Uh, but uh, if you did, that would show. Unknown is uh, another status that no information has been received for 10 minutes. And there's also a degraded status, and that's a loss of performance, but the service is still available. Okay, and the last thing is health alerts. Now, all the information I just went over is great if you wanted to report on or view, but if you're like me, you don't constantly look at a dashboard all day long and you want to get alerted if there's a problem. That's what the uh, service health alerts is all about. So I'm going to create an uh, email and SMS alert. But before I do that, I'm going to go into resource groups and create a resource group for my alerts. And the reason I do this is it will create a resource group for me, but it's going to have a default name that I won't be able to change. I don't know if that's a bug or a feature or whatever, but I like to have my resource groups named the way I want them. Uh, if you have an environment where there's some naming conventions in place, it's a good idea to create the resource group that you're going to put the alerts in first. Okay, so that's created. Now I'm going to go back to service health alerts, and I'm going to create a service alert. Now there's three sections to this. You can only select one subscription at a time. So if you want to set up an alert for all subscriptions, you'll have to come back in and do this again and again. Uh, you can select the services you want. I'm going to leave this as all, as well as the region. And here I'm going to select all as well. And then you have event types. These are what types of events will be alerted on. Uh, service issue, plan maintenance, or health advisories. So I'm going to leave that with all three selected. One thing to note is if you uh, were rolling this into production, you may want to narrow down to just services or regions you actually have services in. That way you're not getting noise from uh, regions with plan maintenance that you don't even host services in. Next is define alert details. So I'm going to create an alert name. And then it's going to ask me where I want to save that to, uh, what resource group, and here, there we go. And I'm going to enable this on creation. And next is going to define the action group. Now, an action group is a particular action that you want to take. Action groups can be reused in multiple different uh, alerting scenarios. So log analytics, Azure Monitor, all these can use the same action groups that you set up. In this case, I'm going to create a new action group. And here, I'm just going to call this uh, service health alert. I'm going to give it a short name. I'll leave the subscription to Visual Studio Enterprise. Resource group. Here you can see it gives it a default name. I'm going to go back and change that to the resource group I set up earlier. 
I'm going to give it an action name of email and SMS. Under action type, I've got email, SMS, push voice. But you can see we also have uh, Azure Functions, so we could call an Azure Function if alert came up. We have Logic App. We could call a Logic App if this alert was fired. A webhook, ITSM, so you can tie it into something like ServiceNow. You can also kick off an automation runbook. So there's a lot of power with these action groups, and you can see how leveraging these multiple services in Azure can be really helpful. For now, though, I'm just going to select Email, SMS, Push, and Voice. And I'll enter in an email address. I'm also going to enter in a phone number for SMS. Now, if I wanted to, I could also do a push notification to the Azure mobile app. If you have the Azure mobile app, uh, you can enable that, and then you type in the email address that you use to sign into that mobile app, and that will push alerts to your device. And in the US and maybe even a couple other locations, there is a voice option. I'm gonna leave those two blank though. Click OK a couple times and create the alert rule. Now you can see I have the alert rule under alerts. I can also go into the history. If it did fire alerts, I would see them in there. So that's all there is to it. Uh, that's the Active Events History Resource Group and how to set up alerts. Please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. That lets me know that people are watching and enjoying these videos. Also follow me on Twitter at Seraltos. Thanks again for watching.